Welcome once again to the vlog vlog. I am your host. The Nintendo Switch is the latest console from the Nintendo, and today I'll be taking a look back at its first four years. Nintendo was founded in 1889 in Kyoto, Japan, and they originally made playing cards. Over the years, they made and sold all sorts of different things, from knockoff Legos to renting out hotel rooms. Nintendo has been involved in the home console market since 1978 with the release of the Color TV Game 6 and made their first handheld, the Game & Watch, in 1980. Most people are more familiar with their first cartridge-based console, the Nintendo Famicom, which is also known as the Nintendo Entertainment System, which were released in 1983 in Japan and 1985 in the United States. The Nintendo Switch is marketed as a hybrid console merging Nintendo's home and handheld products, but ultimately it's a portable console with a dock, similar to how I use my MacBook Pro as my home computer hooked up to two monitors along with a keyboard and mouse. The Nintendo Switch has sold over 80 million consoles and also over a half a billion games in its first four years without any sign of slowing down. The Switch also has six titles that have sold over 20 million units and over 45 titles which have sold over 1 million units, most of which are exclusive. The most popular games on the Switch are the ones made by Nintendo. In fact, the top 15 games are all made by Nintendo, and of the top 20 games, only one of them is a third-party port. As both the successor to the Wii U and the 3DS, the Nintendo Switch has all of the kind of games that you'd expect from Nintendo's home and portable consoles. You have your mainline Mario, Zelda, Super Smash Bros., along with games like Pokemon, Fire Emblem, and the new Bravely Default. When it was first announced, I was very excited because to me it seemed like they were going to merge all of their studios and just concentrate on making games for the Switch. That's basically what happened and it's worked exceedingly well. The Nintendo Switch has two main different styles of controllers the Joy-Cons, and the Pro Controller. The Joy-Cons are perfectly fine in handheld mode, but I don't really use them for anything else. The Pro Controller is a very solid, classic-style controller, and it's the one I use most often. In addition to the two main controllers, there's also a couple of special controllers, like the NES and SNES-style controllers, that you can use and buy as part of their online subscription service. I quite like them and the Switch is also compatible with the USB GameCube controller adapter for use with the latest Super Smash Bros. game. In addition, Nintendo has continued to sell these little figures that they call Amiibos. They do something in the games, but I'm not quite sure what it is that they're supposed to do but I like them, so I've continued to buy them. The Nintendo Switch uses tiny little cartridges like the NES, SNES, Nintendo 64, and the Game Boy, except they're a lot smaller and capable of storing a whole lot more data. It also has a capacity to store games internally with the 32 gigabytes of onboard storage or which with an SD card which is sold separately. The Nintendo Switch is a great console for people who like physical media because unlike games released on the Xbox Series X, the vast majority of physical titles are on the cart and can be played without an internet connection. Personally, I have over 50 physical games and I just like collecting them. Nintendo has also followed in the footsteps of Microsoft and Sony in that they decided to launch their own online subscription service that you'll need to play multiplayer games, which kind of sucks. 
You don't have to pay to play free-to-play games like Fortnite, which is currently contrary to what you have to do for the Xbox, and Nintendo's service is also a whole lot cheaper than their competition. It's $19.99 a year for an individual, or $34.99 per year for a family membership, which covers eight accounts. In addition to being able to play games online and have cloud saves, you get access to an ever-expanding library of classic Nintendo and Super Nintendo games. At the time of this review, there are over 90 available games as part of this service. I think the Switch is a great console for everyone, regardless of internet speed or access. There are patches, but it's nowhere near as bad as the Xbox Series X or the PlayStation 5, and unlike the Xbox Series X, the Nintendo Switch is not an always-on console, so you can still play your games anywhere if you're on a plane, in the woods, on the ocean, or anywhere else without an internet connection. There are a few games that require it, but it's more an exception than it is the rule. There are two different revisions of the Nintendo Switch, the original with a Tegra X1 and the revision with a more energy-efficient Tegra X1 Plus, which was released in 2019. The new version of the Switch improved the battery life from 2.5 and 6.5 hours of gameplay to 4.5 and 9 hours of gameplay, depending on the game and the settings of the console. There's also a portable-only version of the Switch called the Nintendo Switch Lite. From a technological perspective, the Nintendo Switch is not, nor has it ever been, a graphical powerhouse. It's still a quad-core ARM-based tablet, but the games are quite fun. One technical problem with the Switch is that it's not easy to save gameplay videos. At launch, it could only take screenshots, and now it's limited to 30 seconds. While most people may not care about this, it's a big reason why I haven't made any Switch game reviews. I've had the original Switch since its launch, and I'm still using it to this day. The first time I was able to play the latest Legend of Zelda game on a plane was a really surreal experience. Unfortunately, with everything going on, I haven't been able to do that for quite some time, but hopefully that will change relatively soon. The first four years of the Nintendo Switch have been pretty great. I always knew it was going to do well because Nintendo portables typically do pretty well, but I didn't expect that the console would still sell out regularly four years later. I guess I first started to get an idea about how big it was going to be when I had co-workers talking to me about getting the Switch. They weren't the biggest of gamers, but they regularly go on business trips and have kids who hog the TV. So the idea of being able to take their console with them on the go or play in handheld mode while their kids were watching something else on TV really appealed to them. I think the Switch has games that appeal to pretty much everyone. If you're expecting PlayStation 5 or PC levels of performance, you'll be disappointed considering that the Switch is a $299 tablet from 2017. I still think that it's a great system to get, but I would look at the top games on the Switch to see if those are the type of games that you'd be interested in. The only real concern with buying a Switch today is that it seems that every couple of months there is a rumor that the mythological Switch Pro is real and that it's going to be released in a couple of months. These rumors have been going on for a couple of years now and the Switch Pro is still not a thing. Maybe this is the year. Or maybe it's not. But I don't really think it's all that necessary. The Nintendo DSi and the Nintendo 3DS really didn't do a whole lot in terms of games, but it did help extend the life cycle of the respective consoles, so who knows? 
in the world of computers, there's always going to be some better hardware in the future. Now, don't get me wrong. If Nintendo does actually release a Switch Pro, I'll buy it, but I'll believe it when I see it. It does seem like if it does get released that this would be the year, but I don't know. As of now, the Nintendo Switch is a great console that still has a few years left. Nintendo's president recently described the Switch as hitting the middle of its life cycle, but it's best to take what companies' executives say with a grain of salt. However, a major advantage to buying a console in the middle of its life cycle is that the console has a robust library of games that can often be picked up for cheap, and it still has more games coming out in the future. For example, I'm really looking forward to the new Pokemon Snap, Mario Golf, and the new Disgaea game coming out in a couple of months. And hopefully we'll get some more information about the new Zelda and Metroid games sooner rather than later. Overall, I think that the Switch has had a very good first four years, and I'm excited to see where it goes in the future. I want to thank you for watching my video, and I hope you enjoyed it. I want to remind you that this is not an endorsement of the aforementioned products, and I have received no compensation or free products from Nintendo, and I paid the prevailing rate. This video was made for entertainment purposes only, and they're just my thoughts and opinions. I also want to remind you not to subscribe to this channel. I don't know what Google does with that information, and I'm just a guy learning how to make videos on his Macintosh, so there's no reason to risk it. Today, I learned how to record footage from game trailers, along with how to record some live action footage. Poorly, mind you, but I think it still mostly works. I also bought one of those spinny things so I can make videos of things spinning. It's actually pretty loud, but hey, it works and it makes things spin. Thank you again, and I hope you have a wonderful day.